The face-to-face -face meeting between U.S. and North Korean leaders that, at least as of 1 p.m. March 9th, is expected to take place in two months' time. A lot of palace intrigue about how this whole thing came to be. Who even knew about it, where it's going to happen, and frankly, just about everything else. We'll get to those details later this hour right now, though the reaction even to the idea of talks can best be described as mixed. Summits, in order for them to succeed, have to be well prepared. And this one was hastily agreed. If the result of this meeting is not verifiable, concrete steps to denuclearization, it will be a failure. It's very risky, very unorthodox. I'm worried that Kim Jong-un is setting us in a trap, but I support the president. The other thing that might be happening is he's luring us into these negotiations, mm -hmm. but then he will make demands that he knows we can never agree to. Adam Mount is a senior fellow and Korea expert at the Federation of American Scientists, which studies threats to national security. Adam, uh, where do you stand on the spectrum of, of what we just heard there? Great idea or huge gamble that poses a tremendous risk and could ultimately be a diplomatic disaster? Well, every day North Korea is not testing nuclear weapons and ballistic missiles is a step that we're not, is a day that we're not sliding towards war. So this opportunity is really too big to waste. And that's why it's absolutely critical that the Trump administration does not rush this. Uh, they take it slowly, prepare it with staff work, and we have limited leverage here. Uh, we really don't have uh, the ability to give away anything for free. So we need to be prepared. It can't be rushed. Uh, and we need to approach this methodically. It, it, sounds, uh, it sounds like you're skeptical that, that two months is going to be enough time uh, to marshal all of the resources needed to do this thing properly. Is that an accurate assessment? I am. Where is it held? What's the agenda? Do we have time to coordinate with our allies? Uh, we really don't have any many cards to play here, and one was a presidential summit. I would have liked to have seen the North Koreans make more uh, progress before we play this card and put it on the table. For example, why didn't we condition this summit on release of the three remaining American prisoners in the in the North Korean gulag? Uh, it's hard for a president to meet with, with the North Korean dictator without that having happened. If talks are going to succeed, we need to maximize the little leverage that we have. To be clear, this, this is not uh, the first time that the North Korean regime has extended an invitation to the President of the United States to sit down uh, for talks. What's different this time around? Well, what's different this time is that the North Koreans have advanced their programs remarkably. Uh, they have much more capable uh, missiles. The program is dispersed more throughout the country. Uh, the price is higher now than it was ever before. And so that increases the need to prepare for this methodically. Um, we need to have an agenda set, because if Trump feels embarrassed, if he feels like he's being outmaneuvered and talks collapse, that put us, puts us right back on the risk of war, which is higher in this administration than in ever, any before it. Uh, the, the idea that the president of the United States and the president of North Korea would, would even sit down uh, face to face, is, is this proof that the sanctions have worked? Uh, I think it, the sanctions have added some leverage here. I think a lot of the credit goes to the South Korean president, Moon Jae-in, who's been extremely deft about shuttling between uh, a reticent American ally and North Korea, which showed unexpected flexibility. They've been wonderful about um, opening this, this opportunity for talks. And now it's up for the U.S. delegation to put together an expert set of officials, uh, make sure that we have the staff in place that have done these kinds of negotiations before. They're prepared uh, to negotiate jointly with our allies uh, and to really drive a hard bargain. Victor Cha's nomination as ambassador to, to South Korea uh, was withdrawn, as, as you know. Uh, Joseph Yoon, the state's uh, top envoy to North Korea, just recently announced his, his retirement. Uh, who, who is going to be informing the president's uh, decision who's going to be uh, coaching President Trump as he gets ready for this this face-to-face -face summit again assuming that it happens 
This is administra an administration that does not have a very deep bench in foreign policy. They don't have experience with these kinds of international negotiations. Uh, this isn't something that Jared Kushner can do uh, out of the back of his car. So they really do need to staff up, uh, ensure we're doing this coordination work. Uh, you know, negotiations with North Korea are all about phases. You move step by step. If they make a material uh, progress towards limiting their nuclear and missile programs, they get a cookie. Uh, each step needs to be verifiable. Each step needs to be mutually acceptable. And each step needs to aim at the next step so you don't lose momentum. That's a very heavy lift. It's hard to do in two months. Adam, when you, when you have the presidents of two countries uh, who, who've never met face to face, when you have them sit down uh, for a meeting like this and it fails, where do you go after that? What, what would that mean for diplomacy moving forward? That's a real risk. Uh, and so the United States needs to be uh, prepared for setbacks. They need to be able to roll with the punches. Donald Trump, despite his best uh, assertions, does not have a reputation for being a very tough negotiator. His positions veer all over the map. We've seen when he talks to Democrats in the United States that he's manipulable, he's impressionable. So when he gets off the plane, uh, the North Koreans are going to try to take a bite out of him. He can't get embarrassed or offended. He's got to remain committed to talks, don't give away anything for free, but also don't dump the board and allow them to collapse. Adam Mount, enjoyed your perspective and your insights, sir. Thank you. Enjoy the weekend. Thank you. Former Trump